guys, it's your girl Nicole Young and I am back with another video. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the most essential tools that you need as a coding beginner. I know that it can be so tough to juggle all of the things that you need to learn as you are teaching yourself how to code, but luckily there are tons of tools out there to help us to develop those skills and to make it a lot easier to stay organized as we are going. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the top five tools that you need to build skills in as you are also teaching yourself how to code. These are the most essential. These are ones that are definitely going to be required of you if you make the switch into a tech career path that involves coding, um, especially if you're going to be working on a team or building projects for a larger company. You're going to be expected to know these, so I definitely recommend you stay and watch until the end so that you don't miss any of them. Before we get into it, I do want to make sure that I mention that you should definitely go and check out the self-taught coding problems playlist. I have lots of videos in there where I'm going to be breaking down different problems that we have as self-taught developers and coders and a lot of the solutions that I've found to be helpful to overcome those. So check that out, keep it bookmarked, and make sure that you are subscribed and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any new videos that I upload to that playlist. So the first tool is Google. And I know that might sound kind of cliche or obvious, but I want to make it clear that it is so essential to use Google as a tool and a resource as you are learning to code. There is no possible way that you will be able to know everything there is to know as a developer. There's no way that any one person would have everything that they need up here in their brain. You need to learn how to use Google as an asset of just learning things or Googling things and how things work as you need them. The next tool is IDEs and text editors. So if you are learning through courses or through online schooling or something like that, it's likely that you've been using the embedded text editors that come with those courses in those websites. But I definitely recommend that you download your own text editor. I use Visual Studio Code and use it and get to know how it works. So a text editor usually has nice syntax highlighting to make your code a lot easier to read and understand. It also saves people like me who have trouble with spelling sometimes and it highlights syntax errors and it highlights spelling errors and things like that to make sure that as you write your code that it's an effortless process and you can focus on the building and not those little tiny details. An IDE or integrated development environment does even more than that. So not only can you write your source code, you can also compile it or run it to test whether it's working. They also have great features like debugging and things like that. When I was using Swift, I was using Xcode and it was a great way for me to not only write scripts, but also to run them and test them out on a simulated interface, which was really cool to build. There are tons of other IDEs out there as well, so do research on which one would help you the most in what you are learning how to code. The next is the command line or terminal. Now, depending on what operating system you have, it might be called something different, but the fact remains the same that all computers come with this pre-installed and it's a great way to use it for organizing your files, for running version control. You can even use it for things like simple task automation on your devices. It can really help with simplifying those repetitive tasks that you often have to do when you get on your computer. The next is developer tools. Did you know that most browsers come with tools that help you to inspect the websites that you are viewing on your browser. I have been using developer tools really heavy as I journey through front-end development and it has been an essential, crucial tool in my learning. In developer tools, you can inspect the source code of any website that you have access to on the internet. You can look at the CSS, the styling. You can also look at things like the JavaScript on the site and also test and run your own JavaScript on 
a site. So whether you are building your own site and want to inspect it and kind of use it as a debugging tool, or something I do is I love going on certain inspirational websites and looking into the source code and the styling and seeing how they were built. It's really been helpful in me learning how to up my skills as a developer as I am also still learning. And the final, and I've saved this one because I do think it is the most important, is Git and GitHub. So as you become more experienced as a developer and get into more complex projects, or even get into collaboration or working on a team, it is going to be essential for you to understand and know how to use Git and GitHub because it helps with version control and it makes the process of collaboration a lot smoother and simpler. So Git is a system of version control that allows you to track the changes over one file or multiple files over a period of time. So it tracks when changes were made, who the changes were made by, and allows you to have a repository of the history of those files. GitHub is probably the most popular Git repository hosting service that allows you to not only keep versions of your files on your computer, but also allows you to have them in the cloud where they'll be safe. You know that if you destroy your computer, you will still have that project and be able to be using it, collaborating on it, and you can download it onto whatever device that you are using. So it's really popular to use it in that manner, but I would also urge you to use GitHub as a learning resource. You can get repositories by cloning them or forking them from other developers, ones that are more uh, experienced than you, ones that have are working on projects that interest you. You can copy those and use them to learn. You can add or alter them based on what your preferences are and it also helps with collaboration. I've even found uh, links to PDF books that I've needed in my learning process. So there's so much stuff on GitHub that you should definitely check out and get into and start using it as a resource now. And especially for those of you who want to land a job in coding or development, in some time in the near future, you are going to be expected to know how to use it and probably test it on it because most companies that you're going to go work for, you're going to be working on a team and you have to know how to use Git and GitHub and services like it to be able to collaborate and build the types of projects that most big companies need. All right, so those are the five most essential tools that you need to start learning as a beginner if you haven't already and need to be implementing and integrating into the processes that you already have. I've left helpful links for each one of these tools down in the description below, so make sure you go check that out. And let me know down in the comments below what other tools you have been using that have been really essential for your learning process. I would love to add to this list for people who are just getting started. Thank you so much for watching this video. You know I love you and I'm rooting for you and I will see you in the next video.